It's a hot button issue, and both sides are simply not seeing eye to eye. The proposed UK prison transfer agreement with Jamaica has caused quite a firestorm of criticism, and the opposition Jamaica Labour Party is accusing the government of keeping the nation in the dark on a very sensitive matter. They believe the prison transfer deal with the UK is at a more advanced stage than is being reported. Under the proposed prison transfer agreement with Britain, the UK government will provide £25 million to build a new maximum security correctional centre for male offenders. But civil society and the parliamentary opposition are agitated that the UK will repatriate at least 300 prisoners of Jamaican descent to complete their sentences at the new facility. In Parliament on Tuesday, the opposition one by one demonstrated their discontent. This MOU, our proposed MOU, is something that I believe has gone much further than is being admitted to here in the House of Parliament today. The British government has found a weak government. A desperate government. A weak and desperate government which would be prepared which would be prepared to accept the proposal and in fact, based on what we gleaned from the minister, discussions have far advanced and it's just about to put pen to paper. Security Minister Peter Bonting insists that no official deal has been signed. Instead, he says Jamaica and the UK has signed a non-binding MOU. And Parliament must first pass the appropriate legislation before any prison transfers can begin. But if it's only a non-binding MOU, which Mr. Bunting reasons may or may not result in a prison transfer, why did British leader David Cameron announce it as an agreement? The minister thinks there was a misunderstanding. As I said in my statement, I brought it to the attention of the High Commission and I expect that they will uh, deal with it appropriately. The security minister ridiculed the JLP for what he describes as their hypocritical stance on the issue. Mr. Bunting says, for over two decades, successive administrations have tried to build a new modern facility to house male offenders. He adds that the two main facilities at the St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center and the Tower Street Correctional Center were built in the 1600s and 1800s and are severely overcrowded, substandard and inhumane. So there is no principled basis on which to oppose this idea by the opposition. It is just pure, vulgar, political hypocrisy and opportunism. In a new prison, um, with the latest in security features, uh, CCTV, for example, uh, cell phone blockers embedded in the, in the walls, or cell phone blocking material embedded in the walls of the uh, cells, uh, motion sensors uh, on the perimeter walls and in the passageways, things like that. Overall, the minister believes if Jamaica agrees to take up the British offer, it will be a win-win situation for both parties. We would recognize that there may be some quid pro quo for the money that we get, and there is a big difference between what it costs to keep a prisoner per year in Jamaica and in the UK. So there can be a win-win situation in this because it costs about £6,000 approximately per year to keep a prisoner in a Jamaican facility versus 25,000 pounds in a UK facility. So in that range, there is you know, sufficient scope for there to be a win-win. I'm Leslie Anshaw reporting for Scene Caribbean News. Thanks, Leslie. Meanwhile, Minister Bantin says a new prison will help to rehabilitate offenders. He knows that the majority of inmates are serving short sentences between three months to three years. Of the intake who, who really come with sentences of between three months and three years, that was to point out that certainly in the first instance that people are committed to, to serve custodial sentences. It's not as if they are coming for murder or rape or um, you know, a, a, a serious violent offense because you would not typically get a three-month sentence or, or up to a three-year sentence for those offenses. So it shows you that they're probably coming for housebreaking, larceny, 
you know, ma relatively, relatively minor offenses within the scheme of things. So these persons, we take a very calloused <coughs> view. I mean, I have heard myself Jamaicans expressing, well, they don't care how terrible it is in prison. It should be worse because these are wicked people who have committed murder, etc. But that's not the vast majority of our inmates. Mr. Bunting says many of Jamaica's incarcerated males are illiterate. He says the Ministry of Education has been providing skills training to prisoners. I think somebody who is convicted of housebreaking has a reasonable chance or a good chance with a proper facility of being rehabilitated, being given uh, a skill that they can earn a living from. We have 50% of our inmates are illiterate. That is about maybe four times the, the average in the population, four or five times the average in the population which suggests that if you are illiterate, for example, your likelihood of ending up in a correctional facility is much higher. We now have a program that we're, we're introducing um, with the Ministry of Education to, through the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning to greatly expand the high school equivalency uh, uh, courses or, or teaching that will be offered within our correctional system because we recognize that these are some of the impediments that persons have to succeeding when they, they go back out into society.